And good morning, third grade students of Mr. Leggett's class, room 502. This is something a little new. We are doing our Eureka math lesson via videotape. So, first thing we need to do is grab our scratch paper. We have one paper with writing on it and one paper with scratch. So, what we're going to do Let's start off with a little bit of dividing in equal groups. So let's start off with our name. Okay, there's our name. And we could, don't need to bother with today's date because this is just scratch paper. So we're going to make an array. with there we go so how many rows are there well I know you're probably saying yourself there's one and two and how many are in each row and you're probably telling yourself okay I'm going to count those and say there are one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So there's five in each row. So let's say this total is a repeated addition sentence, and we get to simply go five plus five equals, I think most of you know the answer to that, and five plus five would equal 10. But let's switch it up a little bit, do a little bit of um, division. We'll take this total. 10. Write along with me, please, and divide it by 2. So what would 10 be divided, 10 divided by 2 equal? Well, we could see that if we were to divide these 10 into two separate groups, we would have 5. So two groups of 5, that would be 5. And we could even do a reverse um, multiplication sentence we like and why not since we're at it we could say that 2 times 5 equals 10. Do we see the relationship there? I hope you do. Let's go down and do another one really quick and this problem is we're going to make a two um, Let's do four groups of two, all right? So I'm gonna make some groups, four of them. And each one will have two. So Mr. Leggett's just going to check his videotape and make sure we're all good. Yep, we're doing just fine. So first off, let's do some repeated addition, okay? Let's see what that would look like. We could go 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2, plus two would equal what? 2, 4, 6, and 8. So now if we were to take this and create division out of this, we could say 8 divided by 2 equals what? Well, we have four equal groups of 2, so 8 divided by 2 must be 4. And let's do a multiplication sentence. We would simply go 2, excuse me, 4, excuse me, 2 times 4, equals 8. All right, let's do one more. And we'll do, um, let's do three groups of four, okay? Three groups of one, two, three, and four.
and we'll start off with a repeated addition. 4 plus 4 plus 4 equals what? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. Let's do division now. Let's take this total, which is 12, and let's divide it by 4. What will we get? Well, it looks like we have three equal groups of 4. So we would get 3. And then let's do some multiplication. We could do 3 times 4 would equal 12. So 3 times 4. All right. Let's move on to our application problem. And remember, when we do these application problems, we read, we draw, and then we write. So let's first off do some reading. That's the Eureka way. And read along with me, please. Stacy has 18 braces. I'm just going to double check, make sure we can see this okay. I'm going to zoom in just a tad, make sure we're really good. How's that? Looking good. So you could read along with me. Stacy has 18 bracelets. That is something that we know. And I'm going to circle 18 because I bet that number will be used in our problem. Then, something else we know, after she organizes the bracelets by color, she has three equal groups. And I'm going to circle three because I think that'll be part of our problem. Finally, what we need to find out, how many bracelets are in each group. Remember, we kind of did this yesterday, okay? So let's find out. How many equal groups do we have? We have three. So let's do one, two, and three equal groups. How many bracelets do we have? We have 18. So let's start counting these bracelets out. One, two, three. Four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12. 13, 14, 15. So 5, 10, 15, 16, 17, 18. So how many bracelets are in each group? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So let's do our division sentence. We have a total of 18. We divided them into three equal groups. So that must equal 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So now we could write there, this is the writing part, there are six bracelets in each group. So 3 times 6 is 18. 3 times 6, 18. 18 divided by 3 equals 6. So we answered our question. How many bracelets are in each group? There are 6 bracelets in each group. You go ahead and pause the video if you need to catch up. That's okay. We're going to move to the next problem. There's a lot of reading on this problem. So let's take a look at what it says. Next weekend, my friend Cynthia is having a party. I don't really need to underline that. We kind of just know that's what's going on. Let's see what else is happening. 18 people are coming. Well, there's a number in there, so I'm going to underline this because that's something I know, and I'm going to circle 18. All right, I told her I'd help set up her set up tables. Isn't that nice of me? I don't need to underline that. We just kind of know that. Then I'm going to see what it says next. We know that six people can sit at each table. Let's underline that. Something we know. And I'm going to circle six. 
It continues on, but we're not sure how many tables we'll need. And the question is, what information do Cynthia and I already have? Well, we know that. We know that we have 18 people are coming to the party. They've said, yes, they're going to make it. And um, we, we know that six people can sit at each table. So let's try to figure this out. What can we do? Well, first off, we can say that tables are like groups. We don't know the number of groups. So let's use counters to show the problem and check out our thinking. So each of you will have 18 counters. One for each person coming to the party. So our counters are going to represent people coming to the party. So let's see what happens, all right? And this time, I'm not going to give you more or less. It's just going to be 18 even. All right, so I want you to follow along with me, okay? So the tables hold six people, right? So let's figure this out. One, two, three, four, five, and six. There's one table. And let's kind of draw a circle around it. That's one table of six. Let's make another six. Did I say these mean tables? No, these mean people. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Oh my goodness, here's another table with six people sitting at it. Okay, so I'm going to circle that like we're all sitting at a table. And let's do another table. See what we have. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Well, that's another table. I bet we're getting close to 18. I bet you've kind of run out of people, right? Because we knew there were 18 people going to the party. So let's go ahead and count them and see what's what. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. So the eighteen guests, we're gonna have to set up three tables. So I guess we could do a division sentence right off the top. We knew eighteen people were coming, right? Just divide it by six, the number of people that can sit at the table, and we would get three. So Cynthia and I need three tables. What I'd like you to do now is pick up your people, boom, 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 and put them back into your cup, okay? And we'll collect those later on. Bye, people. Hope you had a good time at the party. I know I did. Boy, oh boy, that fried chicken was awfully good, but some people preferred the taco. So, tacos. Now, what I'd like you to do is flip your paper over. And we're going to look at another problem, 14 divided by 7. Hmm, what in the world could that be? Well, we could figure it out with our disk. Let's go ahead and count out 14. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So there we have 14 little, uh, little cubes, or not cubes, uh, squares. And now we're dividing them by 7, so we need groups of 7. Let's go ahead and do that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. Huh, one group there. Let's do another. 1, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. How many total do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So there we have fourteen total. We divided them by seven. We put them into equal groups. So fourteen divided by seven must equal one and two. 
So there's our answer. We're going to do this as a diagram. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So 14 divided by 7 must equal what? The big 2. Let's try a number bond, though, to show how this works. 14 is our big number up there, right? And we're going to divide it by 2. Two groups. How much were in each group? Well, we got it. There were 7 in each group. So there we have it. 14 divided by 7 is indeed 2. Let's do 20 divided by 5. And we're not going to use the disks for this because we don't have 20. We only have 18. First, let's make 5 groups. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now we've got to put 20 in here, okay? Can we do it? I think we can. We have our 5 separate groups, and let's put 20 in. 1, 2, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, and twenty. All right, so we've taken our twenty total and we split them evenly into five groups. So what's our answer? Well, twenty divided by five how many are in there? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. There's four in there. And we could even skip count if we'd like. Why not? We could do four plus four plus four plus four plus four equals what? Four, eight, twelve, sixteen, twenty. And once again, we're going to show a number bond just to be sure. We'll have our 20 up here, and we divided it by 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And so what's going to go into each one of those? I almost said 5, but not 5. What is going to go into each circle here? Well, of course, it would be the number of units, dots, that we have in there. So it's 4, 4, 4, 4, and 4. All right, let's continue on with Cynthia's party. Well, Cynthia plans to buy 15 burgers. Huh. She has 18 guests and she's only buying 15 burgers. Maybe the other people are vegetarians. We'll circle the 15, okay? And then three burgers come in each pack when she goes and buys them at the butcher's shop. They sell them three apiece. So what we're trying to find out is how many packs should she buy? And what numbers do 15 and 3 represent in a pack? So we know we're going to buy 15 burgers, right? And they come 3 to a pack. So 15 is what? What does 15 represent? It represents total, and write this with me, number, that means number, of burgers. And the 3 represents the number in packs. In one pack. Okay? So you have 15. What we need to do is we need to take the 15 and we need to divide it by 3 to figure out how many packs our good friend Cynthia needs to buy. So let's start off with, hmm, let's go like this. There's three in one pack. So basically what we're trying to figure out is 15 divided by three to see how many packs she needs to buy. So let's make three, okay, and we'll go one, two, three. And we're going to divide 15 by three. So let's go ahead and go like this. One, two, three. Four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 
13, 14, and 15. Hmm, what does it look like our answer is? How many units or dots do we have in each group? Well, it looks like we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So there's our answer. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. She needs to buy um, five packs. So let's go ahead and write out she needs five packs. Now there's another way we could do that and let's get out our counters, okay? It's a little more down to earth, I guess we could say. We don't need any more paper. Oh, I'm sorry. If you need to pause, go ahead so you can write that down. So 15 divided by 3 is 5. Now, let's try it like this. Let's get out 15 burgers. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. Those are the burgers she needs to buy. But remember, they come three to a pack. So let's put them in threes. There's one pack. There's two packs. Or two pack. There's three packs. And four packs. And five packs. So does she have five packs now? You bet she does. So we could easily see right here, excuse me, let me just tilt up a little bit. Oh, come on camera. Oops. So we can see that 15 divided by 3 is 1 pack, 2 pack, 3 pack, 4 pack, and 5 pack. All right? Let's continue on. Let's say if there were Oh, let's say, let's just kind of repeat a little bit. How many would be in two packs? Well, that would be six. Three packs would be nine. Four packs is 12. And five packs is 15. So you can see that there's a total of 15. All right. Um, that is all for now. We're going to go to our problem set when we're done here, which we are done here. Put your cubes back in the cup and wait for instructions. You can log on to Cool Math, actually, until I finish up with the fourth graders. So go ahead and log out of this and log on to Cool Math. Thank you so much for your first video lesson.